Thank you all for joining us today and welcome to our first episode of our podcast series, The Support Sphere, where we talk about everything and get you insights into everything about customer service beyond the support desk. So for our first episode today, we've got the topic we're talking about transforming customer support, be it chatbots, AI, and beyond. So I will be your host for today. I am Ambrish. I handle the marketing activities for Zoho Assist. And this particular topic came into existence on a scenario where we've been working on a particular feature. So for Zoho Assist, we've been working on an integration with AI, allowing users to be able to take advantage of the transforming new AI abilities and have them available for them into the remote support tool for better experience. Now, as a marketer doing my, my end of things, be it the surveys beforehand, understanding the depth of this particular integration or the kind of output that this can give, this obviously sparked a conversation within me as to how bringing these kind of tools into a customer support journey can not only benefit our customer support users, but also the end users in general. So digging further into this topic and discussion, I thought, why not have a conversation with someone who actually works in the customer support field and who will be able to give us a better idea about how the entire uh, integration of any AI tool into customer support can help them. So I'd like to introduce Anis Ahmed, manager of the customer support operations for Zoho Assist, Zoho Lens, Zoho Meeting and Webinar Suite of Products to join along with us today to give his share of ideas or thoughts on what he thinks about these integrations or new, uh, new uh, uh, advantages that AI brings in into customer support service. So welcome, Anis. Uh, thank you so much, Ambrish, for uh, having me here today. Uh, I'm really deeply uh, appreciative and uh, thrilled to join you today uh, because this is a topic that is kind of uh, uh, close to my heart because uh, when it comes to comes to customer service, it is I, I think uh, it is a must have in uh, all the company, but it is kind of uh, underrated in most of the companies, not identified to be one of the fields to be in. And uh, uh, though uh, AI is already in the limelight, I'm also happy that you picked up the topic, how it is going to work with uh, customer support or how the technicians can use it so that we can also highlight a little bit about how the customer service works in a company and of course, you know, uh, integrated with uh, AI. Uh, me uh, being, uh, I have been in uh, customer support for over 16 years now. Uh, I've started as a technical support engineer looking at uh, how customer support works manually and happy that uh, I was also able to witness uh the era of ai how it is all integrated so yeah it's going to be an exciting session today i'll be happy to share my opinion and idea that i've had or my experience here with you uh, as an overall oh, okay i just see that you're muted i would say this is a part of what the ai could do also uh so if at all i put you through just uh, ai it automatically overtakes your control and unmutes whenever required. So I guess this time you'll have to manually unmute yourself. Thanks, Annie. Great. So uh, thank you for the quick introduction here. And uh, a quick note to the audience, we've also got an expert panel beside us. So feel free to raise your questions using the Q&A section. We'll make sure to answer all these questions at the end of this podcast as well. So taking cue from Anise's first brief, Anise, I've got this quick question for you. So from a support perspective concept context or take it from an organization itself. So what do you feel is the importance of a customer support team for any organization for any organization? Uh, where does this customer support team come into play? How do they function and what benefits do they bring to any organization? Okay. So, um, Customer service was, uh, though, though we have had customer service team uh, in every company for a very long time. Uh, in earlier days, you know, it used to be the secondary portion of support because uh, 
in initial days, what happens is every time, uh, for example, we get any uh, electronic device or anything at all, any any kind of purchase would uh, come with a manual. So uh, everybody uh, used to give it a try. Uh, they uh, mostly run through the manual, set it up, and in case, that if at all, they run through any kind of issues or wanted guidance, then is when they uh, come uh, approach uh, customer service. Uh, but it has changed, I would say. Off you know, we only look at the manual. If at all, we're doing an unbox session or unbox vlog or anything. But otherwise, it it, it turns up it to be, uh, you know, human assistance uh, throughout. So imagine I just purchased a router today. Uh, I wouldn't have patience to look at the manual or maybe set it up on my own. Uh, the first thing that it would come up with is a, a guide link number or a support uh, assistance number. So uh, the moment I unbox it, I don't look at the manual. I just call up the number. And I personally need somebody to guide me through set it up. So uh, when you talk about customer service in a company, a company for me, I would say, you know, cannot run in the absence of a customer support team. It is a must have team in any company. So earlier it was like a troubleshooting team. So people used to set up things on their own. And if at all they run into any trouble or if at all they think, okay, the product uh, later part isn't working, they used to reach the customer service. However, off it is it has turned up to be right from the scratch until the RMA. So the moment I get a unit, the first thing that I would do is, you know, call up the customer service, get their guidance and setting it up right from installation, configuration. So the customer service team has extended uh, its service uh, right from setting things up all the way to troubleshooting the device and taking it to RMA if at all required. So I would say in, in, in a company uh, must have team as customer support team and the customer support team starts from all the way right from uh, configuring it until RMA. On top of that, hopefully what has happened is all the feedback uh, starts from customer service. So they are the people who are interacting with the customers every day. So any feature request it be or any issue it be, the product team would only be aware of it, if at all, if it is requested by the customers through the customer support team. So I would say it, it, is, has, it has turned to be an essential portion of any company to uh, run the business flawlessly. So in a way, we can, we can take it that the customer support teams also have a say in the future of the product or the way it tends to go based upon the feedback that they receive. And this way, they form a, form a critical feedback loop back to the team. Would that be right? Absolutely. I would say, you know, the entire... A product can change shape based on the user's requirement through customer service. You know, uh, the entire product survive in a market based on the demand from the user. So those demands are uh, hit to the product team through the customer service team. They are the people who are communicating with the customers all the time, getting all the feedback, getting all the issues, not just fix fixing up the issues. They also take time in capturing uh, the requirement and those requirement can definitely change the shape of the product in the market. In turn, it also enhances the business. So a follow-up to the, the same question would be, does having a dedicated customer support team or the availability of a dedicated support team have an influence in the final decision that is being taken by the organizations before buying any product? So let's say I am an organization and I'm in the market looking for a new software to uh, for a critical function of my organization. Would having a dedicated customer support team have an influence on my decision in general? Okay, uh, uh, here I have two different opinions. First thing is, you know, like, um, I'm not sure um, if you're aware, you know, Sridhar Vembu, uh, the CEO of Zoho used to talk. Now, what, what he, he used to say is, uh, when it comes to uh, customer support, every individual in the product uh, should be part of customer support, right? From the developer, from the marketer, from the designer, should interact with the customer uh, to understand what their requirement is, which is, you know, to an extent is okay, but I'm not sure if it is feasibly possible in all the environment. 
but otherwise yeah we should have a dedicated customer support team to interact with the customers because uh, how i see this is like you know the customer support team is the gateway uh, to the product for the customer so if at all uh, the users have some kind of opinion about the product be it good or bad or maybe feature requests or enhancements that would only hit the team the product team through the gateway which is customer support so the customer support team basically is the phase of the product for the customer on the other hand the customer support team are the customers the actual customers for the uh, product team so the feedback that is from the customer support team usually is identified to be the critical uh, feedback and they are worked on it so if you ask me should there be a dedicated team for customer support yes there has to be a dedicated team for customer support which has now enhanced to the next level so it's not just a dedicated team for customer support we also have different layers of team for example for a uh, specific region we have a customer support team for a specific kind of product we have customer support team and we also have a customer support team dedicated to enterprise market we have few for uh, uh, mid market we have few for uh, uh, low market so it we have customer support team for different market different region different set of people people we have different set of uh, 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 we, we also have uh, uh, customer support on uh, region specific uh, based on the language uh, so the reason we had to come up with multiple teams multiple variants of customer support is all because we realized that at some point a dedicated team for uh, customer support is essential for any business great thank you anis so heading into the um the direct concept of a uh, customer support so we've got different ways in which teams have been providing support to users be it uh, via email or via call or we've got live chat or dedicated scenarios so what do you think are some of the best or effective ways for teams to handle customer support with, with within these uh, these different methods that are already available or how has this uh, evolved so far um uh regionally it used to be email um, it started all with uh, email support we have a lot of people communicating over email uh, even if i have any uh, issue i want assistance i just write to uh, support uh, id and they get back to me over email with all the steps and tricks to uh, fix it up and then at some point uh, we realized that okay uh, uh, email uh, isn't sufficient i may ha i may have to talk to somebody uh, for them to guide through and there came the uh, call option so i can uh, call up the customer support technicians and then most of the products in the market came up with the 100 number uh, which usually connects to uh, the customer service agent and they guide through setting things up and uh, helping uh, troubleshoot the issue and fixing it up and we also parallelly started with something called a live chat tool uh, so for example you know if at all uh, there is a traffic uh, uh, due to outage or something. Uh, what happens is most of the time we all are put in the queue. We may have to wait for a very long time to talk to an agent. So that is where, you know, I had a parallel team uh, who could assist the uh, person. I would say, you know, never a, a support person is on a single chat. So it's like, though a person cannot talk to multiple people over phone at the same time, we can have a single technician working on uh, multiple uh, uh, customers issues over chat which got introduced in the later part so every website now uh, has a chat widget on it so you can just simply click on the chat you can start working on it you can raise your query and the other person out there will reply to it so these are all the different ways we evolved right from uh, 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 email all the way to chat but at the same time we also got introduced to automatic messages we got introduced to can messages we got introduced to uh, basic reply so what happened is it's not just uh, with uh, human interaction that is where we adopted a uh, can messages bars and everything which helped us primarily to control the traffic so what what happened was the way it has evolved right now i would say uh, right now the previous stage would be if at all there is a customer who pops in 
uh, who, who comes in uh, with a query or a trouble they are facing uh, uh, with the product that is uh, out there in the market. Uh, we had a pattern, we learned it, we understood uh, of all these customers' issues, uh, what has been happening, what are known issues, what are unknown issues. We captured it, we analyzed it, and we came up with a few automatic messages that could help them uh, solve the issues. So we came up with canned messages, we came up with automatic open script, automatic flow script, and all these helped the uh, customer support team to control the traffic to an extent. So we all have had this experience. So when there is a, an outage, uh, unexpected outage in B, the flow of query would be really huge in all these channels, be it uh, e-tickets or uh, uh, calls or chat. But then these automatic messages to an extent help that control the queue. And this, this eventually evolved in multiple ways, let's say, you know, can messages, bot, and now we also have AI integrated and uh, it's it's pretty uh, evolving uh, process it is. Now, great. With, with that answer, you've also answered one other question that I had, which was, has it entirely been manual or has there already been automation in terms? And your answer on how we've had can messages and automatic replies available for a few, answers that it has not always been manual and with the needs rising, we've always had uh, automation come into play. Now with that hook, I'll get right to the topic for today's discussion. So what is your view on AI with customer support? So as a marketer, I know that there are verticals that have already been exploring about using AI in their day-to-day -day work. Let's say, for example, a developer has the ability to use AI to help him refactor his code check any issues or work on any things that it needs to function on. As a marketer, I know where I could take leverage of AI beat with refining my content or giving me different new ideas or trying to pitch a few ideas and so on. But more of these where we are, are I would not consider them to be mission critical. Even with the case with developers, we only use it to some extent where we have them on the usual development, but not on mission critical task. But however, how I see customer support is somewhere which is a bit more essential for any organization. And how do you think AI would be fitting into this entire picture? Do you think this would be a boon or do you think there would be uh, any disadvantages to it? Uh, if you ask me if it is advantage or disadvantage, we have for both. Uh, like uh, the entire world knows that uh, AI is not something that we can completely rely on, completely give control to. But uh, can we not use it in customer service? We can definitely use it. We've been using it. So like I said, it all started with, uh, you know, can messages, uh, uh, like uh, automatic messages, bot and everything. However, after the migration of AI, we I only see it as the next level of upgradation of uh, uh, automatic messages, I would say. For example, AI in this environment is primarily used to control the traffic when required. So like I said, you know, uh, regionally we started with opening script. It used to be like, you know, we uh, manually typed the opening script uh, saying, you know, thank you for reaching us. Welcome to uh, uh, so-and-so support. And uh, I am with my name uh, introducing, I'll be happy to help you. These used to be the manual uh, text that every support person used to type or uh, speak up over call. Then we came up with the scripts, you know, uh, it all happens to be uh, uh, pulled in automatically that the technician does not even know that the technician can straight away jump into the actual issue and uh, get started fixing it. Um, I'm not sure if you would believe if I told you, uh, originally uh, we had something called uh, front desk. So what the friend desk used to do is, you know, whenever there is a request coming in over call, the friend desk would uh, pick it up and understand the customer's issue and everything. And then they route the person to appropriate department and uh, they would uh, help uh, the person uh, based on whatever the query is. Later part is when we introduce something called IVR, where, you know, uh, when the person needs assistance, they get on to uh, the user on a call or the technician on a call they can simply pick up the option over the phone just by clicking whichever the uh, uh, the dialing number is given through and it uh, routes the person directly to the appropriate 
department and uh, they uh, assess it. So this I see as an advancement of the front desk routing to the proper uh, uh, team or uh, IVR. So uh, this is all it started with. Then we came up with canned messages. We came up with uh, uh, automatic uh, uh, reply. Now, how it can help, how the AI can help in customer service would be, it is all about training the AI. So in the previous uh, segment that we've been talking about, in the previous era, what we learned is what we are going to use here in AI. So we had a lot of learning. We had a lot of analysis. We captured a lot of uh, uh, issues or pattern that we came up uh, with that we can feed into AI so that what the AI could actually do is the maximum it could do, I would say, not the entire that a human could do. I would, I would definitely not agree to that because uh, AI could never replace it. But then one thing I could say is training the AI, what it could basically do is uh, I can give you a, I can give you a simple example. Let's say you know I got a router. I need somebody to troubleshoot it. So based on the model division, light status, and everything, I could feed feed the AI and help the AI to pick up the right article and help the person with. Or not necessarily it should be a text article. It could also be a voice article where the the actual customer would feel somebody is guiding through. Not necessarily it is a human being. But then that is where I would say the AI is right now limited with as it comes to customer service. You know, it is good in picking up the article because uh, when, when I compare with a human being working uh, with a customer and uh, AI working with a customer, I would say that I, I would definitely agree there, there are always human error, which is, uh, which is kind of less damages. But then when it comes to AI, we have to limit the AI uh, in terms of picking up the article and sharing it with the customer. We cannot uh, give the unit directly to the AI and uh, have it work on it. And that is where we are in right now. So we have given the AI the privilege to route the customers to the appropriate article or uh, maybe even the voice uh, support. Great, thank you for that. So. We've, we've had uh, can messages earlier. We've got uh, AI being able to provide you with articles and uh, route them via the IVR and so on. So what do you feel would be next? Where do you see this going? Do you feel that there would be an even bigger impact or even bigger impression that AI would leave on the customer support vertical than what it is today? Yes, Abrish, because, you know, we have, uh, uh, when, when, when we talk about AI, it is a kind of uh, uh, a big, vast ocean of which, you know, we have just stepped into the first uh, layer of it. So from where we have started, I would say uh, AI picking up an article and uh, routing the customers to appropriate article is one thing that we could do right now. But then when it comes to, comes to customer support, you know, we can use AI in terms of, I, 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 in fact, you know, originally started with, you know, we have different kind of uh, customer support team for different region, different uh, segment of customers and everything. I, I, I guess, you know, these can be achieved uh, using AI. You know, when it comes to language, I'm not sure if AI has got any language barrier. It's all about how you, how you uh, train the AI. So when you train the AI, uh, one thing that I would say could happen is just cut away the human error. But then for any kind of sophisticated setup that any customer would need, uh, or even sometimes for the customer service team need, AI would be essential. We have started with you know, training the AI in fetching the appropriate article or the voice note for the customers to deal with. But then what we are right now working on is training the AI to capture the pattern. Uh, we have had uh, learnings in the past. Uh, we analyzed the kind of issues we could get. We made known issues. We made uh, patterns from uh, light status or uh, log prints or error messages, exceptions and everything. Now, what we could do with the AI is, you know, train the AI to capture the pattern which would, uh, which eventually works in replicating further or building further more articles. It's not just, you know, fetching the article, the AI could actually read the logs, read the pattern, 
make up a new request for a new article from where we can push an article and then it goes on. So this is uh, just a flow just to start with. When it starts to read the pattern, yeah, we can get more information from it and we can train it more and more to make it more effective. Right. So uh, apart from the advantages that we've all been seeing so far, I would also like to touch upon the security aspect of having uh, the AI with customer support. So how safe or secure do you think it is for us to have AI and customer support? And where do we keep or where is the limitation or the fine thread where we balance between uh, a, an individual or rely on uh, AI for this case? Okay, okay. So, so on a, a security perspective, <laughs> sorry to interrupt you. No, so uh, well, we all know that AI is no human and uh, uh, there is a limit where we can have the AI be used. So when you talk about security, yes, we train the AI or uh, any, any open source for that matter. We train it uh, for our convenience, our uh, comfort. And when, when we train it, we need to make sure that uh, we, we should realize that uh, this is not something that is from within my pocket or within my cabin. So it is globally out there in the market. So I'm giving some kind of data to it uh, for it to learn and then getting the output from it. So if it is something that uh, is within my laptop, within my computer, uh, I wouldn't worry much about security because anyway, I'm not gonna lose the data outside of uh, my laptop. But when I use an AI or any open, uh, I wouldn't just stick to AI or any kind of uh, open source from internet. When I try to train it, I would say every data that I give has to be filtered at least four times. Uh, I, I need to make sure that I'm not sharing any kind of personal data in terms of uh, uh, my de uh, details or my company details or my customer details. So we have something called, you know, information about a person that has to be completely filtered when i say information about a person people usually connect with email address or a telephone number or the physical address or the image of the person i would say uh, anything that is again pointing to any of these information would be uh, critical let's say you know uh, i'm 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 just giving uh, some customer code which doesn't fit in uh, which does not represent you know a customer or anything but at the back end if there is a server that could associate the customer number with a, a individual i would say that customer number should not go to ai uh, very simple example i would say is you know we have something called dns table that could uh, maintain the uh, dns number with uh, i mean the ip address with the actual uh, uh, url now, as long as it has a specific lease time, if at all I manage to get the IP address, I can uh, get the URL. I can track uh, the URL. I can crack into the URL. So many uh, 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 server bombarding could happen uh, with this part of uh, uh, data leak. So every time uh, in terms of you know training an AI, what we have to focus is we need to filter the data as to what we are feeding it with. Uh, for example, I can give generic scenario, get an output, I can rework on it and see if that fits in my uh, uh, requirement. I cannot give the exact scenario with the exact, exact customer details or even, you know, I would say the device details can uh, help the AI to uh, feed uh, or maybe get more uh, details about the customer from uh, other uh, feed that it could uh, obtain from. So whenever we train the AI, we need to focus that we are not giving additional data, that the AI is smart enough to get uh, details from other location and uh, crack into. So when it, when you talk about security, yeah, uh, there can be a security threat. It's all about how you're going to use it. Great. So any PII data or personally identifiable information is a big no. And trying to have as much as a, uh, as a generalized question towards AI would be best. So I think that was a pretty apt explanation on, on the security front. 
So we've also got a few questions from our audience for today. So I'll just bring a few up for you. Mm -hmm. So the first one here being, uh, how can companies strike a balance between automated AI responses and human interaction in customer support? So when you say balance, uh, we, we again, we have to do that because like I say, AI uh, is for a kind of sophisticated setup where, you know, uh it it gives it gives all that the customer would need we just need uh, to make sure that we monitor it right so it it gives a complete suite of uh, result for the customer where you know uh the human human effort is less on it they can just monitor it now if you ask me if that is enough uh should we also have uh, uh human support I would say uh, AI can never replace a human support. It is all because, you know, there is something called uh, putting yourself in the customer's shoes, which an AI could never do. So it's like, you know, I, uh, I asked the AI to do something and the AI could do it, but putting ourselves in the customer's shoes can only happen with the customer, you know, with, with the actual uh, human being, which is a, uh, customer support technician. So there has been instances where the customer would connect with the uh, technician and would demand for the same technician the day, next time the customer uh, uh, reaches the customer support uh, team. It's all because the 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 connect happens for various reasons. Like I said, you know, to understand the customer's issue, to uh, empathize it, to make the comfort, to give that nesting uh, bay for the person to sit on and explain it. So these human uh, connect uh, can never happen uh, uh, over AI. So uh, it's it's like we, we need to have, we need to have uh, control between AI and also uh, human uh, interaction. But I would say, you know, AI can never take control of uh, uh, human uh, effort here. Great. Thank you, Annie. So uh, one last question, though, from our audience. And even though this is uh, an extension of your previous answer, I would just like to bring this up to answer a lot of questions in general. So do you think AI will take over human jobs specifically in the customer support vertical? I know we all know the answer to it, but just to be clear, though, we'll end the podcast on this one. So uh, if you ask me, can AI take over human jobs? Uh, it, uh, I, I cannot give it. I cannot give it from uh, other uh, uh, perspective, like you know, uh, uh, be it you know, development of, of a new product or uh, marketing or designing or anything. Because uh, I, I just can give you a, a tiny uh, a note on it when it comes to development. If I only uh, train the AI with specific language and uh, give the flow chart of what I need or the algorithm, uh, I'm sure the AI can give me a wonderful output, which can be you know less uh, 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 less used or maybe you know at least to get started with. But if you talk about AI in customer support, it can never take uh, over a human job. It's all because. Uh, the, the same thing that I mentioned earlier, uh, putting uh, yourself into the customer's shoe is not something uh, that AI could do. So uh, it's it's only a human can uh, read another human requirement or uh, how it functions or how it fits in. So we have we have had all kind of customers. We have had customers like I said, you know, asking for the same technician the next time they get connected to. We have had customers spending one uh, long hour uh, talking to the agent for uh, an issue that can be resolved in 10, 15 minutes. We have had uh, customers, uh, frustrated customers coming in, stating the things are not working. So all these feel, which are completely human feel, I don't think any AI could read it. So AI can be used when it comes to a scripted reply, but when it comes to proper customer service, I would say, it is completely with the human being. All right. And I'm sure that this answer would bring upon a sigh of relief for a lot of people. And with that, I'd like to thank you, Anis, for joining us today and sharing your views and your thoughts on how uh, AI is uh, transforming the customer support vertical today. 
And to all the audience who've joined us, we'd like to I'd like to thank you all once again for joining with us. A, a recording of this podcast will also be made live will be shared to you via email and will also be live shortly on our YouTube channel. So we hope that this particular podcast session was was very helpful and you were able to get to understand about the market trends in terms of customer support. I look forward to catching you all in our next podcast series. And I think I can take a cue from what Anis ended it today with the human touch or the human factor in customer support. Maybe we'll have a quick conversation with uh, someone about this one in our next podcast. Thank you all once again for joining us today. And you guys have a great day. Thank you, Abhish, for having me today. You have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.